Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and we're back with the MSI Mag X870 Tomahawk, which was provided by MSI, so big thank you to them for the motherboard, as well as the G Skill Trident Z5 RGB 2x16GB 8000CL38 Expo memory kit, which was provided by G Skill, so big thank you to them for the memory. And we're on the Ryzen 9 9950X, my retail 9950X, the one that I bought. Um, so, first of all, big thank you to the channel supporters for making the purchase of the CPU possible. And the reason I have this combination of hardware here is because today uh, we are going to find out, or more like you're going to see, uh, what it's like when your CPU's memory controller just isn't good for 2 to 1 mode. Um. There we go. So, I have to turn the autofocus off and kind of botch that. Um, so, yeah, that's what we're going to do. I do have the oscilloscope hooked up. Now, this motherboard and this memory kit with, like, the 9700X works great. You turn on the Expo and it just works. With this 9950X, it just doesn't. Um... And now I haven't, like, gone and bent over backwards at this point to try get it to work, because this 9950X has not been able to run DDR5-8000 for as long as I've had it. There's, like... I think the, the closest it has gotten is, like, 30 minutes of Carhu at one point. Um, and then, like, I changed something in the BIOS and it went, went right back to not working again. So, you know... <laughs> And then I could never get it to do that again, so that that was probably just a lucky fluke on the on the CPU's part. Um, so yeah, uh, also the oscilloscope is just hooked up to the back of the CPU socket for this, so those are not like... Well, at low currents, it's actually pretty close to the CPU voltage. At high currents, it's not. It's higher than what the CPU is actually getting at high load. Um, but anyway, so we're going to just start by turning on Expo and seeing what happens, right? Because... the you don't really, like, I feel like you do hear about the silicon lottery being a thing, but I don't feel like you get a lot of direct demonstrations of what it looks like when you lose it as hard as I tend to. Because, um, like, yeah, this memory kit on this motherboard with other CPUs works amazing. You turn on Expo and it just works. And then you put this 9950X in there. And... You try to put it, like, you try to run a memory stress test. Um, and well, you'll see. Like, sometimes it'll p spit out an error, but usually it just resets it, like, the, the CPU just hard crashes. Um, so. Yeah. Anyway, like, getting through memory training and booting up is, of course, no problem. Um, because that's pretty, like, it, yeah, that's basically a solved issue for AM5. Um, even at DDR5-8000 right now. Um, and for the test, uh, I'm not sure what I want to run. Um, I guess we could go with Prime95 large FFTs, because that's, like, the easy one to set up. Um, because that has, like, a mouse UI. Um, so, oh, I guess I should pull up Zen Timing so that, like, we can quickly check that. So... Oh man, okay, it's really not sta- eh, actually, maybe it's not. So, what I have noticed with AM5, if you're running really unstable settings, it'll sometimes make the whole system slow down. Um, though I've not really run into that with this CPU. Um, but usually the CPU, it works, like, it looks like it's working fine, and then it just reboots itself. But, um, or actually, it depends on the motherboard. On this motherboard, it doesn't reboot, it just die like it just like the cpu just hard crashes and the motherboard just like sits there with like hello mr cpu are you awake um but anyway so yeah uh expo profile i also want to pull up the spd for this so these are all auto timings right so they're incredibly loose the performance is not amazing uh this is also defaulting to 1.3 volt soc because that's just motherboard vendor things is like for one-to-one -one mode this actually makes sense right because some cpus might actually need a ton of soc voltage to run like 6400 in one-to-one -one mode 
um, and some CPUs won't run 6400 at all. Um, but um, uh, for two to one mode, this is totally unnecessary. Um, you should be able to run like two to one mode at like 1.05, 1.1 volts SOC on basically any CPU, as long as you didn't completely lose the silicon lottery. Um, but anyway, so yeah. Um, also here you can check the part number, right? G-Skill, Memory Kit, DDR5-8000 Expo. Um, and uh, now we're just going to try run Prime95. I kind of wonder if it runs harder without AVX512. Because for, like, specifically for just CPU testing, turning off AVX512 uh, is better. Um... Anyway, on the oscilloscope, you can see that, like, the voltage is just, like, it's very noisy right now compared to, to idle, um, which I didn't actually show you idle, so, you know what, I'll just quickly stop it. Um, but yeah, so that's what idle looks like, right? And you can even see the CPU going into, like, a lower power state. Um, and anyway, so if we run large FFTs... Yeah, and then as the threads load up, it gets, like, noisy. Um, and after a bit of this, um, like, Prime95 does load cycle quite significantly, so depending on what FFT size is running, the voltage level will shift around a bunch. But um, we probably won't even get to the point that the voltage level shifts, because the CPU will probably crash before then. I could be wrong about that. This should take maybe a couple minutes... Um, but unfortunately with like this kind of instability, oh, there we go. That was actually really, really quick. Oh, it did actually reboot fully. Um, yeah, this time it fully rebo rebooted. Um, that doesn't always happen. Sometimes it like, uh, crashes and, and just sort of gets stuck. Actually, it might have done that. It might be stuck on 15 now. Which, 15 is memory training. Oh, no. No, it got through memory training. Yeah, so that, that was just a hard reset. Um, because the memory controller crashed so hard uh, that the... Like, if... My guess for how this propagates is that... Because as far... I'm not sure if the memory controller is actually capable of, like, resetting the CPU like this directly. The Infinity Fabric is. Um, the Infinity Fabric has a bunch of error correction, and if that error correction gets overwhelmed... It'll basically do that. Um, though I think the CPU cores also have that capability. Um, but, um, yeah, the CPU cores can also do that. That they'll just, like, reset the CPU if, if, uh, usually if it's, like, they don't have enough voltage. Um, but, um... The CPU works just fine if you, if you run it at DDR5-7800. So the thing that I wanted to do in the BIOS now, which is why we're in it is, uh, you know, lower the SOC voltage, because uh, 1.3 volts is insanely high, um, and can actually make its stability worse sometimes. So we're just going to set that to 1.05 now, um, which, unlike my 9700X, would be a perfectly good SOC voltage to run, but on this CPU, it makes absolutely no difference. It's still going to reset itself. Um, it might take slightly longer this time, though. <laughs> So, yeah, so, like, the whole point of this video is basically just, like, don't just assume that if you buy a motherboard that's rated for DDR5-8000 and a memory kit that is rated for DDR5-8000, that your CPU is going to run DDR5-8000. Now, unfortunately, I don't exactly have, you know, stacks of CPUs to play with, um, so I don't know what the, like, how unlucky you have to be to get a 9950X that does this. Um, I have no idea. Um, right? Um, but, um, like, I, I would hope that it's relatively unlikely. Um, but I, I don't know, right? Like, I have, uh, two 9950Xs, um, and the other one does work at 8,000, but it has, like, some other issues. Um, and uh, then I have a 9700X, which works at 8,000 just fine. 
Um, and then I have a 9800X3D that I haven't tested yet because I have too much stuff to test. Um, I don't know why I'm opening hardware info. That's not going to tell us anything useful. Um, oh, I opened up HCI. We don't need that right now. And we're just going to hit it with large FFTs again. Sometimes it manages to error out before it resets itself, but yeah. The CP, like, so that's just, so basically I think if you have a CPU where this happens at DDR5-8000 or at like any speed, like if you keep, because obviously like the Expo profiles are generally, like I haven't seen an Expo profile for more than 8000 yet. Um, but you can certainly overclock an 8000 rated kit to like 8200, 8400 or something if your CPU is capable. Um, and so my point with this is like, yeah, and if you see this kind of behavior, probably not going to happen. As in like whatever speed you're attempting is probably just not going to work if the CPU does this kind of thing. Um, what's funny about this is I've actually not seen this on any of my other CPUs, at least not to this degree. The like Ryzen like resetting itself if the core voltage is too low or your infinity fabric is really unstable or... Um, or your memory is really unstable. Like, that, that is a thing. But on this CPU, it's like... That. Right? Like, it, it's, it happens crazy fast. Um, and with insane... Like, and just constantly. Like, it, the, like, most other chips will usually give you some kind of warning that, you know, it's unhappy. Like, you'll see errors getting thrown by various tests. This chip just... It just does this. You know, you don't get any errors. You don't... Well, sometimes sometimes it'll manage to get some errors, but usually it'll just it'll just reset itself. Um, so, yeah. Um, and I just wanted to show this. Um, and also, like, for me, like, the point of... Like, the, the secondary point of this was I just wanted to know, like, hey, what was all of my, like, was all, like, because I've had this CPU for a lot longer than the other chips, and I tried to do 8,000 on the CPU for a while with, like, a whole bunch of motherboards, and I never got anywhere. And so the other reason that I wanted to do this video, or more like just do this test, the video is secondary, um, was to prove to myself that, yeah, this, this CPU really does just suck that badly at 2 to 1 mode. Um, cause this memory kit definitely does 8,000. This motherboard definitely does 8,000. I've done 8,000 on this motherboard with a whole bunch of other memory kits that aren't even rated for 8,000, right? Like I've run the Kingston kit at 8,000 on this board. I ran a, uh, 7,600 rated King Bank kit at 8,000 and completely stable. Um, and then I put this 9950X in there. I put this 8,000 rated G skill kit in. And it does the same thing that it's done with literally every other memory kit that I've tried with this CPU so far. On every other motherboard that I've tried with this CPU so far. Um, well, sometimes it'll also crash before it gets into Windows. But that's like there's like one motherboard where I've seen it do that. Um, so, yeah. Um, just kind of be aware that like if you're, you know, buying 8,000 rated Expo kits. If you get... Like, I do kind of suspect that I got incredibly unlucky with this chip. Because um, that's just how my life works. Is just anything that's dictated by luck is just going to be bad. <laughs> um, with the exception of my, I guess, success on YouTube. Because, yeah. Um, but, like, I like I buy hard... Like, any brand new hardware I buy is probably going to be terrible. <laughs> or broke. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, um, so, like, I don't know, like, I, like, my, 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 like, speculative and kind of hopeful guess is that this is, like, a zero, like, a 1% or 0.1% CPU, but I don't have a hundred CPUs to, to verify that, right? Um, but, um, yeah, it, it does happen. You can get a 9950X, right? Most expensive CPU you can buy for the socket. Because the thing is, 
AMD doesn't really bin the memory controllers, not for a DDR5-8000, right? They bin them for JDEC, but JDEC for these cheap chips is like 5600 or something. Um, I think it's 5600. Um, and so they really, like, AMD does not care if, you know, they make a 9950X where you turn on an 8000 Expo and the CPU just resets itself. Um, that's not their problem. The CPU only officially supports 5600, and that's fair enough. Um... Like, I'm not blaming AMD, but I do want to, like, the thing is, like, I've seen people, uh, like, assume that, like, a 7600 or a 9600X would have inherently a worse memory controller, and it's like, nah, it, it won't, because, like, the memory controller is a completely separate die, right? Like, with Intel CPUs, you could make the argument, like, if you have good cores, then the memory controller, which is part of the same silicon, at least like Raptor Lake, obviously not Arrow Lake, because Arrow Lake is all uh, chiplet as well. Um, but before Arrow Lake, you could kind of make the argument like, well, if the rest of the silicon is good, the memory controller is probably also good. But with Ryzen CPUs, the memory controller is completely separate from the cores. So you can have good cores with a terrible memory controller or terrible cores with a horrible memory controller and everything in between. Um, so, yeah, and if the chip is a 9950X, 9900X, 9800X 3D, 9700X, 9600X, that really shouldn't matter as far as I know, because from AM, like, in AMD's manufacturing process, that is not a, like, the ability of the memory controller to run DDR5-8000 is not a criteria that they test for, right? Um... So, yeah. Anyway, um, that's it for the video. So hopefully you found this somewhat interesting, if not particularly useful. Um, and thanks for watching. Thanks for, like, if you'd like to support the channel. So, because I do actually want to, like, I'd like to buy some more CPUs um, for 9000 series. Like, mainly, well, not more CPU, like, mainly a 9900X. It's like one CPU, not multiple. Um... But uh, yeah, if you'd like to support the channel, there are links in the description. Um, it would be much appreciated if you if you check them out. And uh, um, yeah, that's it for the video. So thanks for watching and uh, goodbye.